Hey friends, welcome back to UFD Tech. Today we're gonna to be going through a build video because we haven't done one in a little while and we wanna make sure that we've got the handle on the pricing structure of everything that's going on in the world right now. And so today we're gonna to be doing a $750 build guide telling you what are the best specs that you could possibly get for that price in the midst of everything that's going on today. So we did our best to make sure that everything is free shipping on Amazon right now and is in stock. So you would be able to pick it up at the moment. Obviously there's a little bit of turmoil with regards to Amazon shipping setup right now. There's been a few uh, discrepancies, whether things ship now or they ship towards the end of April. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we've covered it in hot news. And we also tested out Best Buy's in-store curbside pickup that you can do in a quarantine situation. You can check out that video right up there. But suffice it to say, everything as of recording today on April 3rd is in stock and I could order it and have it here by Monday if I chose to order it today. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. And again, we'll leave links in the video description. Everything's an affiliate link. So if you pick it up, we get a small kickback. It helps us out a lot, keeps us going around here during such uncertain times. Well, let's talk about best $750 PC you could build, which we're gonna base everything around this CPU right here. This is the Ryzen 5 1600. AF. And in case you haven't heard about the AF CPU, it actually is a bit different than a typical Ryzen 5 1600. It's actually built on this 12 nanometer node instead of the 14 nanometer node, which means that it's actually basically a Ryzen 5 2600. So that's actually pretty impressive. AMD updated the chip long after the fact, made it faster so that we could get better performance. But the best thing about it is that they didn't raise the price on us. You're actually getting first gen Ryzen pricing. A Ryzen 5 3600 right now costs you about $175 to $200, depending on where you're buying it. This Ryzen 5 1600, on the other hand, comes in at a cheapo price of $85 with six cores, 12 threads, Ryzen 5 2600 performance. This is the best value CPU that you can get. Sure, you can buy a Ryzen 5 3600 for about $100 more, but you're gonna lose that with the other components. You're not gonna be able to get as good of a graphics card in this limited $750 PC budget. So 1600 AF, it's gonna perform phenomenally. It has so much value at $85. It's hard to really recommend another CPU at this price point. So with the Ryzen 5, we have a good base to the system with everything else I tried to squeeze out as much performance as possible which means we dropped the price a little bit on things like the motherboard the case is probably the most expensive thing in this build lineup that we could probably scrounge on but I couldn't find a ready enough in stock case that I would felt comfortable recommending but I'll talk about that when we get to the case let's now move on to the motherboard which is this gigabyte b450m ds3h I've used this in several builds this is actually in my son's computer build with with his Ryzen 5 2600 and it performs admirably. It's $73. You get support for up to 3,600 megahertz memory on the motherboard, which is great because we actually will get faster RAM that will allow us to unlock the potential of the Ryzen 5. So you can get that set up and it also has four RAM slots. So you can upgrade whatever you see fit down the line from this recommendation that we have here. It's actually been a remarkable little board for the entire time that I've used it. I've had no issues with the basics of overclocking on my son's PC. So I could highly recommend this B450M DS3H for the price point, $73. It's hard to find a better motherboard. There's really hardly a reason to go up to an X470 or an X570. We're not gonna see too much benefit out of those. So staying with a B450 makes a ton of sense. And with the RAM, this is where that B450 helps us because we can get up to 3200 megahertz with this Ryzen 5 1600. So the RAM that I have basically recommended is this Oloy Warhawk 16 gigabyte kit. The reason I went with 16 gigabytes is because it seems like it's it's basically the standard in this day and age. If you rather go with eight gigabytes, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. You might be able to squeeze out a little bit extra to get a better graphics card, but knowing me and how I use a system, I have apps open all of the time. I'll have a Chrome tab open or dozens of Chrome tabs open while I'm playing games. So I use resources very heavily. 16 gigabytes is a minimum for me personally. It's $82 for this RGB version. However, if you wanna save a little bit of money, there's a couple of options, but still getting a 16 gigabyte kit. Silicon Power has this X Power Turbine Gaming, which looks like it's straight out of like early 2000s gaming computers with its like blue 
aesthetic. I'm not sure I love the heat spreader on this, but that's gonna be personally based on whatever you like. But there's also this Corsair Vengeance LPX, which is $77, $78 right now. And so it's a little bit more expensive than the Silicon Power, a little bit cheaper than the Oloy, but is just plain old black RAM, which could save you a few bucks and not really stand out in your system. Now this next part of the build is where I struggled the most, the SSD, because SSD prices have gone up a bit lately. However, NVMe prices have gone down quite a bit. So it's actually really hard to balance whether or not you spring for an NVMe drive at this point. And personally, me, I'd rather have fast storage and I'd rather have a lot of fast storage. So for this build at $750, I think we can squeeze in a one terabyte SSD. However, we're gonna keep it with a SATA SSD because the pricing of NVMe, while still close to the SATA SSDs that we have, isn't quite as cheap as it was a few months ago to wholeheartedly recommend. So I have this SanDisk SSD plus one terabyte internal SSD. The reason I go with one terabyte is I just wanna keep everything on one drive personally. This is just my recommendation. Don't like getting 500 gig SSDs and having to offload some of my data onto a one or two terabyte spinning hard drive. I just don't like having to segregate data like that. I like making sure that all of the information I need stored on my computer is done on one hard drive or SSD, if you would in this case. You can get an NVMe SSD for about $15 more right now. We have this Western Digital Blue SN550 picked out in case you wanna splurge a little bit extra on that to get faster speeds, more than the 550 megabytes per second that you'll see on the SATA SSD, which will help your PC overall and make it quicker in loading games. But it's not really necessary and we're already slightly over budget with all of the recommendations I make. So it, this is gonna be a personal choice. If you can kind of squeeze a little bit of wiggle room in that $750 budget and maybe squeeze towards that $800 mark, then this Western Digital Blue would be a high recommendation from me. Or you could check out any other cheap one terabyte NVMe SSDs to get the full speed. Now, where are we gonna put all this? This is probably the thing that I debated about the most, but it's really hard at this moment to find any case cheaper than the $60, $70 mark that's actually viable for most computers, that's gonna have enough airflow to make everything work and is made by a reputable manufacturer so that you can actually trust the build quality when you finally get it. So I have two different choices that we can go through in this standard build, which would be the NZXT H510. It's a staple. It's just a clean looking PC. It could fit everything that you need it. It looks really good. You can get it in multiple different colors to fit whatever taste you have. And at $80, it just works. There's also the Corsair 275R Airflow Edition, which has tempered glass on the side, has a cool little grill design on the front, and is the same price as the NZXT H510. So you can choose between either of those, and that's gonna keep you well within our $750 price bracket. Or you could potentially cheap out and pick up something like this DIY PC over on Newegg. This case cost me $25, I believe it was. May, might have been $23. It's a cheap piece of crap case. Airflow is not great. But if you're trying to save as much money as possible on the case to upgrade other parts, such as the GPU, it's not a terrible option. This is the cheapest case out on the market, and it's worked fine. It's not horrible. It's not great. It's just kind of in that yeah, I only paid less than $30 for this case, so of course it's gonna be like that. So you can get something like this and put all your PC specs in that, and that'll allow us to get a slightly better GPU out of this scenario, but just long-term reasons, I prefer just getting a more expensive case so that everything looks better because you're actually not sacrificing all that much performance with this case. Then, let's cover the GPU. This is uh, the big part of the show. This is what's gonna actually drive all of your graphical performances and what I have picked out is the RX 5600 XT, specifically the XFX FIC 2 Pro because this is probably the cheapest one that you can find on the market for $280 and it actually puts us slightly over budget. So with the 5600 XT, we're at $769.75. So it's a little bit more pricey than the $750 price point, but comparing that to the lower down cards, springing just $20 extra to get the 5600 XT makes so much sense. You might be able to find deals and discounts not on Amazon and some of the other components so that you can make sure that you get this GPU in there, but at 
1080p resolution, you're gonna be able to play high settings, 60 frames per second with the 5600 XT. You, in order to go up another class of GPU, you're looking at spending over $300. So for under $300, the 5600 XT makes a ton of sense. It's in a really good price bracket. It performs really well. This one, I believe, has the BIOS update to it so that it's actually running faster. If not, you might have to do that yourself, but that is free by AMD, so you can make that happen for yourself. But it will perform admirably in whatever 1080p games that you need it to, and at $280, there's not a whole lot of competition in that price point. So for the power supply, there's actually a couple of different options that we could have for powering this entire system. There's a brand that I've never heard of before, which is the APVIA 600 watt 80 plus gold ATX power supply. It comes in at $50, which is a remarkable price for the specs of this. However, once again, it's a brand that I've never heard of and ratings seem to indicate that it has some fan noise associated with that. Other than that, there's a couple different options from EVGA that you can look into. They have some 500 watt models that are in the 80 plus bronze rating. The Apevia one looks really interesting because it has higher ratings for power efficiency with the 80 plus gold over 80 plus bronze. Uh, but it, we really need to keep a power supply in the 50 to 60th dollar mark to keep us in this price bracket. Otherwise, we're going into a higher end build, which then we would trade some of the components to maybe change things overall. So $50 is what you're looking to spend on the power supply right now. There's several different options in this price point with varying levels of efficiency, but for the most part, you'll be good with several different ones. Just buy one though. So with that, you have a 1080p decent gaming system. The NZXT H510 or the Corsair 275R are both gonna be good looking PCs that make sure that yours stands out and actually looks like a modern gaming PC and you're gonna be able to play all modern titles I keep saying modern, but at 1080p, 60 FPS on high settings. So the 5600 XT is a good choice. AMD has instilled some killer value when it comes to the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. $85, it can not be beat. For $100, you can get the 3400G with integrated graphics. So this coming in at $85 is wicked insane. Sometimes it goes out of stock, which means that the price goes up to about 115. Don't buy it then, wait till it comes down to $85 and pick it up. And don't forget that everything we talked about in today's video is linked below in the video description. So check that out. If you're looking to pick up any of the PCs, it helps us out a lot if you would use any links down below. And that's it, let us know what next build guide you would like us to cover, what price point you want us to see, what we can do builds in, Curious to hear from you down below in the comments, so be sure to do that. Also, while you're down there, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. I'll see you in the next one.